Hi, I'm Becca Hubert, the principal of Mound Elementary, and this is five good minutes on emotional intelligence. As you can see, I've been watching these videos. I've got my Bitmoji classroom. I've got my screencast-o-matic. And my hope is that you will find something useful here too. And that is the ruler method for increasing our emotional intelligence. Um, so let me start off by asking you the hardest question of the day. How are you feeling? Are you fine? Are you fine? Are you fine? Are you fine? Well, if you know me, you know this is kind of where I'm at most of the time. But the point is, we use words like fine. We use words like living the dream. We use the cat's meow or whatever else we throw out there as a shield because we're not ready to share our emotions with people. We're not ready to be vulnerable. And as we know, our students have gone through a lot, um, as well as our staff. And if we're going to help everyone get through the emotional hurdles we have to jump over, if that makes sense, we need to really hone our skills. And if we can't identify our own emotions, how are we going to help students identify their own? So uh, today we're going to talk about the ruler method. We're going to recognize, understand, label, express, and regulate. Uh, and, and again, this is going to be quick, but at the end I'll give you some more resources. So the first is to recognize where we're at. This is called the mood meter, and I'll go over it at the end too. Um, but really what I want you to do is think about where you are right now and what quadrant you're in. Are you low energy? Are you high energy? Are you low pleasantness? Are you high pleasantness? Um, again, these are not the same colors that we associate with zones of regulation. They are the same colors, but different meaning. Not one of these is, is bad. The goal is not to get to these green emotions. The goal is to recognize where we are and then help us come up with a plan. So uh, figure out where you are and we'll move on to the next slide. Pause if you need to. After we decide what quadrant we're in, then we search to understand why this emotion why now? Why am I feeling this? And I gave you four guiding questions. Um, what might have happened to cause these feelings or reactions? What happened this morning or last night that may exacerbate this issue? What has happened with this person or situation before that might be connected? Um, until we understand why we're feeling a certain way, we can't move on. Next, we have label. This is a rough one. I'm gonna move this thing down because if I can't see it, maybe you can't see it. Once we attach a label to a feeling, then we can begin to figure out what to do about it. So the other day, I was feeling, I was over here in the red and, and I didn't know if I was peeved or annoyed or irritated. And so I kind of investigated what each of these terms truly mean on the granular level and decided I was peeved because my, 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 my annoyance, my irritation, my peevedness was at a person. And it wasn't until I actually figured that out on that level that I could start to come up with a plan. So um, again, pretty important to figure out the actual label. Not fine. What are you? Uh, next we have express. And this one to me um, is, is where we get into trouble with students. Um, we have these display rules. When is it okay to express an emotion? When is it okay for a student to say, I'm bored, I'm frustrated, I'm irritated, I'm ecstatic, I'm optimistic? We all have these rules in society. We all had them in our family. Did you grow up in a family where you just brushed your feelings under the rug? Well, what happens if you're irritated and you don't express it? That irritation turns to fuming, which turns to enragement, which may turn into throwing a chair or getting in a fight with your spouse. When if you had expressed that feeling at that irritation, it wouldn't have continued to grow. So that's why we really need to work on expression. Our last is regulate. And let me move this little bad boy around again if I can find it. Um, regulating emotions, we often think of as uh, using sensory tools, which as you can see, I've got a ton behind me. But really, labeling is the most important part to, to regulation. Once we say, I'm feeling optimistic, then we can figure out what to do about it. Once we say, I'm feeling downhearted, then we can figure out what to do about it. Then we can go from that downstairs brain to that upstairs brain. We can go from that negative self-talk to the positive. We can go from the blaming to the reframing. Emotional regulation is just the thoughts and actions we use to manage those emotions and to come up with a plan. Now, I know I went through this incredibly quickly, but if, if you practice this ruler method, then you can help the students. And once we've gone through the ruler, then we can get back to where we need to be. 
um, my five minutes are up. So what I'm going to do right now is um, just go to my little resources page here. This is the after party, not the five minutes. So don't count off on me. If you want to log off now, go ahead. Um, if you want to learn more about this, this book, Permission to Feel, top notch, great podcast, go to the castle. Uh, website or the Yale Center of Emotional Intelligence or contact me reach out and we can talk about it and I can give you some actual research on the ruler method and I can give you some resources for the ruler method and I can even talk you through it um, that's it folks on that note have a wonderful summer and thank you MCTA for doing this and thank you for letting me be a part